Thanks for joining us today. I'm Brenda Hazard. I'm the library director, and I'm here with my colleague, Sarah Romeo. Over to Sarah. Hi. Oh, okay. I, I don't, Paul, do you want to go on, into your intro? <laughs> sure thing. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> welcome everybody to how to openly share your faculty created materials using creative comments. As uh, Brenda said, we have Brenda Hazard, Sarah Romeo. Brenda has served as Hudson Valley's library director for the past dozen years. Uh, she began using open educational resources when teaching English 115 back in 2016, and she leads the Campus OER Initiative. And Sarah is an adjunct librarian, an online media specialist uh, at the Dwight Marvin Library, as well as an adjunct faculty member in the English department. She also works as a public services librarian in her spare time. She holds an MLIS from the University of Alberta and an MA from the University at Albany. Uh, just a quick note, uh, we are recording this session, and if you don't want to, uh, your face to be recorded, uh, just uh, submit your questions via the chat, uh, because it only records whoever is speaking. So if you have a question, you don't want your face to show up, you can certainly just uh, send it in the chat. And yeah, I will turn it back over to you, Brenda. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for um, attending our session this afternoon. I see some familiar faces and names. Some of you are already very involved in the OER initiative here on campus. And there's some of you who I don't know uh, through OER, and I'm delighted you're here. And I hope this will um, excite you and motivate you to get involved with the OER movement. Um, I did want to put into context today that our remarks are really built upon the OER initiative that's going on on campus. And one of, the, one of our motivations for providing this particular session is to encourage faculty to assign Creative Commons licensing or open licensing to their created works whether it's materials you're using in the classroom or other scholarly or creative works, by assigning Creative Commons licenses, you are contributing to the open universe and you're both al um, allowing your materials to be considered open if you're submitting a proposal for a course textbook adoption, or you're allowing others to find your materials and use it in their own courses. So that's really what's behind this. Um, our session is broken down into two parts. Sarah's gonna start and she's going to provide some background on Creative Commons licensing. And we're gonna all learn more about what the, the various licenses are. And then um, she'll take questions and then I'm going to uh, review some practical examples of adding Creative Commons licensing to a variety of materials. So first the theoretical and then the practical. Um, there's also time for questions at the end. So again, thanks for coming and bear with us uh, if we uh, stumble a couple times in the technology part. <laughs> Sarah, over to you. Yep, I'm just going to get the presentation um, loaded up here. All right. All right, everyone. Um, good afternoon and welcome to our presentation on how to openly share um, your created materials using uh, Creative Commons. Um, as Brenda mentioned, I'm Sarah Romeo, um, and I'm an adjunct librarian, among other things, uh, at Hudson Valley Community College. Um, and I will uh, jump right into uh, what Brenda mentioned is the sort of the theoretical portion. Um, so what we'll cover uh, overall today is a little bit of background on the open movement. Um, we'll talk about, you know, what is a Creative Commons licensing? Um, how does it work? Um, why choose it over a traditional copyright licensing? Um, I will do some uh, chatting about the six different uh, types of Creative Commons licenses. And then Brenda will move on to the practical portion, um, how to select and affix a Creative Commons license to your work, and then how to share that work if you uh, so choose. So first, um, what is the open movement? Uh, some terms you may have heard, um, you've just heard Brenda talk about OER, open educational resources. Um, open pedagogy has been a big term um, at conferences and webinars that you may have attended or CET workshops and open access. These are all terms that are have um, come into play over the last number of years. Um, so open ensures that everyone can actively participate 
and contribute to the sum of all human knowledge. And I, I love that. That's a very idealistic um, definition, but it really um, sparks with me personally. Um, and this shift um, will generate a more equitable economic opportunities and social benefits globally without sacrificing the quality of educational content. So that's sort of the ethos behind the open movement um, in general. So as you can see, um, this has gained a lot of traction in recent years, especially in technology and education sectors. Um, it's access oriented, learner driven. It allows educators and learners uh, to shape and customize knowledge. Um, it's intended to better serve students and it focuses on sharing. Um, so Creative Commons, I, I see it as the key to making open happen, to making it work. Um, so what is Creative Commons or CC as you'll see throughout the presentation? Let's see, I'm just gonna pull all this up. Um, so I'll share with you first a quote um, by econ economist David Ballier. Um, a commons arises whenever a given community decides it wishes to manage a resource in a collective manner with special regard for equitable access, use and sustainability. So that's a little bit of um, a background about what a commons is and, and I just liked that description personally. So the idea behind uh, Creative Commons licensing is to create an easy way for people to creators to share their works in ways that are consistent with existing copyright law. So they set this up with a set of goals, um, which was to build a globally accessible um, public commons of knowledge and culture, to make it easier for people to share their creative and academic work, to access and build upon the work of others, and uh, to contribute to equity, accessibility, and innovation. All right, a little bit more about that. So Creative Commons began as a um, rejection of the expansion of copyright law that occurred in the late 1990s. Um, the founders of the Creative Commons organization, um, they recognized a mismatch between what technology was starting to enable and what copyright restricts. Um, so this was all about, you know, when the, you know, when the internet basically took off. Um, so a number of fellow fellows and students at Harvard Law School and Stanford Law School got together to get this project off the ground. And so Creative Commons is not just licenses. It is also a set of legal tools, a nonprofit organization, a global network, a movement, um, and all inspired by people's willingness to share their creativity and knowledge. And this is enabled by this set of open copyright licenses that we call Creative Commons licenses. All right, so copyright and Creative Commons licensing. So I know everyone here um, is probably familiar with copyright uh, in some way, um, whether it's you've contacted someone to ask about using their work or you just kind of grit your teeth and wonder if the scan you're making is illegal as you scan a page from a book. I, I know we've probably all done that a little bit. Um, but Creative Commons licensing is intentionally built on top of copyright. Um, and copyright um, encompasses the exclusive set of rights given to a creator to print, publish, perform, film, record their material, or to authorize others to do the same. So almost everything creative that we produce is automatically protected by copyright so long as it is fixed in a tangible medium. And that includes um, this PowerPoint, things you put on the web, anything like that. Um, a work does not need a, a C symbol, a copyright symbol to be protected, nor do you need to officially register it with the US Copyright Office. And the current length of copyright is the life of the author plus 70 years. So how does um, Creative Commons licensing work with that? How does it integrate? Uh, the first Creative Commons licenses started to appear on the scene in 2002. So they've been around for a while now, um, almost 20 years. They function as a some rights reserved approach rather than the traditional all rights reserved uh, with copyright. Um, I'm sure many of us have heard those words before or seen them somewhere. Um, I like to think of copyright law as sort of um, in terms of sewing, I know this is a weird analogy, but Brenda's heard me say this a few times. I like to think it as, as stitches that are very tightly sewn together. Um, that's traditional copyright. And then Creative Commons snips a few of those stitches, so it loosens the seam. It gives you a little more breathing room and a little more leeway, which is probably something we can all uh, relate to um, in COVID times. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, 
it functions on this some rights reserved approach, um, but you still must own the copyright in order to apply a Creative Commons license. So it has to be your work that you own the copyright to. It applies where copyright applies and for the same length of time. Um, and it is free, standardized, guarantees proper attribution to the author, and is specifically designed to work with the web, though we are seeing them applied on um, lots of other mediums these days. Let's see. So how does Creative Commons licensing work? Um, you do not need to register with Creative Commons to apply a license to your material. Um, it's legally valid as soon as you apply it, and, um, and the material has to be something you have the right to license, as I mentioned. So what this means is that the Creative Commons organization does not have any special knowledge of who uses the licenses or for what purpose. Um, it does not have any way to contact the creators, and it has no authority to grant permission on behalf of those creators, um, and it does not manage any of the rights. So that's something to uh, think about. So you might be asking yourself, are these licenses legally enforceable? Um, and the answer to that question is yes. Uh, the licenses have gone to court a number of times and uh, to Creative Commons uh, knowledge, they have always been upheld and valid. They're legally valid. They're drafted to be legally enforceable around the world. All right. So today, um, in those almost 20 years that Creative Commons licenses have been around, um, they're not going anywhere. Um, in fact, uh, they're everywhere and they're gaining traction. Um, they are now the global standard for open copyright licensing. Um, and this number is probably greatly out of date by now. Um, more than 1.6 billion licensed works exist on over 9 million websites. And I think that was from last year. So um, just think about that. So how do you um, identify a work that has been licensed with a Creative Commons license? Um, have you ever seen one? Uh, you have, because this uh, PowerPoint presentation, Brenda and I have licensed it, as you'll see here. Um, we've marked our work with a set uh, of, of words and a symbol, um, and they go together. Um, and now we will start to explore what these symbol and this wording all means uh, in the next few slides. So I apologize in advance as we get into the licensing and the symbols. This is a bit dry and uh, full of legal jargon, um, but we will provide you with some resources to refer back to this information um, at the end. Uh, so don't worry if it doesn't all stick the first time. I still use my cheat sheet to double check things. So um, Creative Commons licensing symbols. So the six licenses are um, comprised of a mixture of symbols and um, abbreviations. So you'll see the symbols on the left and the set of abbreviations on the right. And these are mixed and matched together to form the six different licenses. Each symbol represents a key right within the license itself. So the six licenses. Um, it's important to identify which one you'd like to apply to your material. Um, or which license has already been applied to material that you intend to use. All of the licenses at a minimum require attribution. So that just means give credit to the author. Um, and that's something we are in academia, we're pretty much uh, trained to do to begin with. So I've organized the licenses here from the least restrictive to the most restrictive. Um, so I'll just quickly go, I'll try to quickly go through these um, to give you some more details. The first license at the top here is the CCBY license or the attribution license. This is the uh, least restrictive license. Uh, you may have noticed this is the one we, we put on our presentation today. Um, it means that this uh, work can be used for any purposes, even commercial, so long as credit is given to the original author or authors. The next license you'll see here is the CCBYSA, the Attribution Share Alike License. And as you can see, all we've done is add an additional component uh, to this license. So it can be used for any purpose, even commercial, as long as credit is given to the author and any modifications to the work um, must be shared with the same license. So if you took um, a worksheet that was 
license under this and you wanted to change it and add some things, um, you would have to put the same type of Creative Commons license on it, even if you made changes to it. All right, so we'll move on to the next one, the CCBYNC, the Attribution Non-Commercial License. So this license is a little different. Um, the work can be used for non-commercial purposes only, and you do still have to give credit to the original author. So you'll see they're starting to tighten up a little bit. All right, and we'll move on to the last three, and you'll see um, we're adding some more symbols here. We have the CCBYND license. So you may use the unadapted version of the work for any purpose, even commercial. You have to give um, attribution to the creator, but you cannot use any adaptations or uh, derivatives. You can't make changes. You can only use verbatim copies of the work. The next one, CCBYNCSA, the Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike License. So you see we're starting to get a little more complicated. Um, it has to be used for non-commercial purposes. You have to attribute it to the author and you must share any adaptations with this same license. And finally, uh, the most restrictive license, CCBYNCND, the Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. So this is the unadapted work. So no adaptations can be uh, used for non-commercial purposes only and you have to give credit to the creator. So no adaptations or derivatives are allowed. Um, as I mentioned earlier, try not to get too hung up on these details right now. We have plenty of resources um, to explain and uh, help you decide on these if you should choose to use them. So moving on, there are a few other symbols um, in the Creative Commons licensing world, um, the CC0 and the public domain symbol. Um, so Creative Commons also offers a way to release material into the public domain, um, and they use the CC0 tool. It's a legal tool for waiving as many rights as possible. Um, and you may also be familiar with public domain, um, which, is which is a symbol used to indicate that a work is free of known copyright restrictions. Um, either it never had copyright to begin with, or the copyright has expired. So essentially, these marks mean that the work is free from all restrictions and can be used in any way, including without attribution. Um, not that that's something we would generally uh, do. So some things to consider. Um, as we'll show you shortly, um, it's very easy to apply a Creative Commons license to your work, um, but you'll need to remember that you are actually giving up some of your rights as a creator, which is never something you're going to want to take lightly. Um, so you'll need to take into consideration um, the work itself and how you think it could potentially be used. So some things to remember are that um, Creative Commons licenses are irrevocable and they cannot be canceled. They apply until the copyright expires, which is, as I mentioned, uh, the life of the author plus 70 years. <coughs> Excuse me. You can, however, um, decide to reoffer the work under a different license or even with a regular copyright because you still have all of those rights as the creator. However, anyone who finds the work with the original license is legally allowed to use it under the original terms. So these are things to keep in mind um, about Creative Commons licenses. They do not go away. Um, and while you may offer it again, the original still stands on its own. Sorry, I needed to take a drink. All right. So what you may be asking yourself is where does Hudson Valley Community College stand on all of this that I've just told you? Um, so in 2019, Hudson Valley Community College approved an open access policy. And you can see the whole thing here. You don't need to read the whole thing right now. But I do want to pull out a section um, and read that to you. So this apology was created to, um, and it says, to encourage open access progress and respond to SUNY's vision of open access learning environments, Hudson Valley Community College permits faculty and staff to assign Creative Commons licensing to the academic materials they develop, including, but not limited to, textbooks, lecture notes, and websites. Faculty are encouraged to identify, develop, and adopt wherever possible the use of open educational resources as an integral part of the HVCC teaching and learning mission. 
<clears throat> so as you may know, um, sort of as a corollary to this, um, the last time we offered this workshop, we had a really great discussion about who owns the copyright um, to your work as a faculty member. And so this may be something you know from copyright law or even your faculty contract, but a lot of what you create is actually um, work product of Hudson Valley. So they would technically um, own the copyright to your faculty creative materials by default. So what actually what this does, this open access policy, is it creates a loophole um, for your teaching materials. It gives you back a little bit of ownership. So by actually by snipping a few of those threads and um, you know, uh, of co traditional copyright, you are opening up to taking back ownership of your own work and how it's used. So um, I know a lot of the adjuncts were particularly um, interested in this theory as they um, take their, you know, teaching materials from institution to institution. This gives them back some of that ownership to use and share and uh, disseminate these under their own terms. So with that said, um, we've reached the end of the theoretical background uh, part of the presentation, um, but I'd be happy to take any questions. If there are any, um, feel free to unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think I can view the chat. Let's see. There was so we'll, we'll take any questions at this point by either chat or yeah. uh, verbal. Oh, thanks, Brenda. Put the uh, the Creative Commons licensing guide there, which is uh, has all of the information I just went over as well. All right. I don't know. Everybody's quiet, Brenda. <laughs> all right. So um, if you're being shy, uh, don't worry. There's plenty of time for more questions at the end. OK, so now get ready because we're going to switch from the PowerPoint mode to doing some practical examples. Um, a number of things that Sarah said may have gone over, you know, gone over your head. There were a lot of different, a lot of content that she just shared with you. Um, but I think what's really important to keep in mind is that um, the Creative Commons license gives you, it's something you get to apply because you are, if you want to assume you're the owner of something that you're developing in your office or at home as teaching materials, you can choose to apply a Creative Commons license to materials you develop. Okay, so let's get into four different examples. Um, I'm going to show you a really nice tool. So in case you're like, oh my goodness, how do you decide which of those licenses? Um, there's a nifty online tool that you can use um, to choose a license. I'm going to show you how you can apply that to a Word document. We're going to apply that to some online resources, and we're going to uh, apply it to a YouTube video, believe it or not. And I'm going to show you how to find Creative Commons materials on YouTube. So, um, And we're going to post one of our materials to an open repository. So, um, you know, a lot of what's behind this is is the idea of sharing the faculty excellence that's here at Hudson Valley with others. And that can be done by you sharing your teaching materials through open repositories that are available out there. So I'll show you some of those. Okay, so let's see if I can successfully share my screen. And um, you're gonna have to bear with me as I ask you a few times if you can see. I have a dual screen monitor and I try to set this up so I can still make eye contact with you while I'm looking at my screen. Can you see our, our question slide? Okay, I got a, I got a head nod. Um, Sarah also knows that my workstation is prone to having the microphone cut out. So Sarah, gesticulate wildly if my mic goes out because I tend to just rattle on and I'm not aware of it. Okay, so. Here we go to the next phase. Whoops, let's see here how I can. Um, um, so Sarah has already reviewed that. So I'm gonna jump forward and we're going to look at these four examples. Handout you use in, a, in your class, right? We're all, we all do that. An exemplary teaching material that, um, that you would like to assign Creative Commons to and you want others to find that. So we'll, we'll post to an open repository. Then maybe um, some um, 
online content that you find especially effective and you want to put your Creative Commons license online. And lastly, we'll take a look at a YouTube video. So that's where we're going in our remaining time together. So here's our first handout. So let's say I'm teaching an information literacy class and um, I like to use this handout with my students because it's about data visualization. And um, I think this is important for my students to know. And so this is one of the examples that I use. Okay, so here's the example it shows, you know, we talk about how data is present, how gra uh, graphically uh, data is presented and so on. And I've just been learning about Creative Commons and open licensing. And I'm thinking I might want to do that because this is a handout that I use all the time. Okay, so whoops, let me. Uh, so here's the document, and where am I in terms of what can I do with this? Well, the answer is, and you might be scratching your head on this. Guess what? That's not something I can assign Creative Commons license to. Okay, maybe you noticed in the small print. And you probably saw it. I this is a this is a copy from a book that I didn't publish. It had a page name. The graphs were given. Um, it said that they were licensed to be used by others. So if you're in a situation like that, you are not the copyright owner. So you cannot assign Creative Commons to it because you do not have the rights. So I agree, this was kind of unfair of me. I started out with a trick question, okay? That's just to keep you on your toes. All right, the next ones, I, I probably shouldn't tell you this, are more straightforward. But just to get that important concept out of the way, if you don't own it, you cannot assign Creative Commons to it. All right, so now a more traditional example. I've got, uh, I'm still teaching that information literacy class. Um, I actually switched the assignment here and I've got this Word document, okay? And I think this is pretty nice uh, this was a pretty effective um, exercise that I used with my students to emphasize ethical use of information and what kind of information should be cited and what doesn't. So I put a fair amount of thought to this. I've refined it over the semesters and I'm thinking, you know, I think there's some other library instructors out there that might like to use this. So I wanna add a Creative Commons license to this particular document. It's something that I produced and I wanna add it to um, somewhere so others can find it. And the other important thing is I want to start showing, I want to show visual evidence to my students that I'm engaged in the open movement. Um, so by adding a Creative Commons logo to my documents that I distribute in class, it's another opportunity, it's teachable moments for um, encouraging students to be aware of this, and frankly, encouraging students to be producers of information and adding it to, to the um, open comments. Okay, so now the practical part. What do I do? I've got a Word document here, and I want to choose a license and I want to insert it in this Word document. So there's this great site and um, you should be able to see this, right? You can see my creative, uh, my, my browser here. So I'm at the creativecommons.org website. Okay, we've been talking, am I back? You're back. Oh shoot, okay, thanks for waving everybody. I'm not sure where I left off, I was talking about the Creative Commons website. You followed me to there? Okay, good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we want to share our work. We've clicked on that and we're going to use this nifty tool on the share, share your work page called the chooser. Here it is, choose a license. So let's go through this. It's so simple, it's laughable, okay? This is all you have to do is this section right here. Do I want adaptations of my work to be shared? Sure, that's part of being open. And the examples I am used might not be relevant to somebody else. So yes, I want others to be able to do this. Do I want commercial uses of my work? Sure, no problem. Nobody gets rich off information literacy instruction. So go right ahead. Okay, so by choosing these, 
Well, let me just say no for a minute. So you see over here, it's showing me based on what I choose, it changes the license that become that's viewable over here. So I'm going to go back to my most my, my original responses, which are the most open. You can uh, you can adapt it and you can use it for profit if you're so inclined. OK, so what I like to do is I like to go here where it says have a web page, even though I'm putting this in a Word document. I like to go down here and I can just copy this and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to my Word document. I'm going to insert my footer. So again, nothing here that I'm doing that is anything fancy. I'm just going to edit my footer and I'm going to, can you see that still way at the bottom of my screen? You're good with that, okay. And there's my Creative Commons license. I'm just gonna move this up here. I could, I'm not gonna take the time now. I could change the font around, but here it is, my Creative Commons license and we're good to go. And I'm going to now just close this. I'm gonna save my document and here it is ready to be handed out to my students, either in print or posted to Blackboard. And I've given this a, uh, an open license. Good. So there we go. That's an easy one. Now we're going to go back um, later on in my presentation to how I can uh, post this to an open repository. I'll get to that in just a minute. Okay, so here's what I just did. And now we're going to go to our next example, which is um, how to add a Creative Commons license to online content. So again, let's say you've got a web page, not in Blackboard, probably. It should probably be something that's open. That, uh, when I say open, I mean it's not behind a firewall. Okay, so if, you're, if, um, if you've developed content that you make available outside of Blackboard um, and uh, others can find it, you, you maintain web pages somewhere, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're going to go back to Creative Commons. Uh, .org to that chooser. We're still, oh, I didn't tell you about my page. I didn't tell you about the great thing that I want to add a Creative Commons license to. Let me show you that. Bear with me. Let me open that back up. I'm trying to, uh, hide, let me hide my controls again. Okay. So this is the page that I think is pretty nifty. Okay, this is only something that librarians would be interested in. Okay, but still, I like it. I think others may like the interface I included here. And I want other librarians to know they're welcome to take my idea about how to present this information, uh, kind of an innovative way to maneuver through the uh, through this very, very lengthy web page. And I want others to be able to find it or to feel that they can use it. And I want to demonstrate that I use open. So this is the public side of the page. This is just the reserved textbooks um, finder. It's really not that exciting, but I got to show you some example here this, uh, this afternoon. And what I did before you got here is I started, I did a little background prep and there's a little box over here that's on my page that's where I'm going to add the Creative Commons statement. So let me show you how I do that. Um, I'm going to spare you all the, um, the guts of um, the background part of how um, the, the platform we use, but let's just suffice it to say, I'm going to paste in some HTML code that's going to show our Creative Commons license. Okay, so how do we do that? We go back to Creative Commons page to that chooser, okay? And I'm going to answer those questions again. Do I want adaptations to be shared? Yeah, absolutely. Do I want commercial use? This time I'm going to say no. Okay, so I'll say no this time, no commercial use. But otherwise, you're welcome to take it and use it. So what's nifty about this chooser page is it also gives you HTML code. So if you're familiar with coding, what you can do here is I can just grab the, all the code that's in this little box that shows up. So I selected that. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go over to my, my page that allows me to edit. 
I'm going to go into here. You can have to imagine you're using some kind of a web editor here. I'm going to paste in my code. Okay, I'm going to save and close that. Boom, just like that. There it is. Okay, the, what this will look like to an end user is this. There's my nice my nice Creative Commons uh, logo. There's a link and this part's hyperlinked and that takes a user to this description of what a user can do with this information. So that's also pretty nifty. Okay, so that's my other example of how you can use, how you can add Creative Commons licensing to a web page. All right, moving along. Um, how about a YouTube video? Maybe some of you are creating videos um, and you'd like to be able to post those where others can find them. And you'd like to not give YouTube the rights to monetize your content. Note, YouTube, uh, if you do not uh, follow these steps, YouTube takes the license for your materials and can use them. I'm guessing that that family with a grandmother that talks about, uh, we've probably, most of us have seen that great YouTube video of goo goo, goo goo, right? Okay, so that was probably some family who posted that and hasn't made a dime and YouTube has shared that with millions of people. Okay, so how do you control some of that um, control of what you post to YouTube? I'll show you how you do that. Okay, so, before you got here, actually some time ago, I created a YouTube video and I'll just show you my file. I'm not going to show it to you. Um, here it is. It's my YouTube video here. It's about five megabytes in size, a couple minutes long. And it's about <clears throat> the video is actually about how to search YouTube for Creative Commons materials. I'm going to show you that afterward, not the video, I'll show you live. But I want to put this out there for others to be able to use. Okay, so that's the file that I want to upload to YouTube. Um, I'm going to go through the steps on how to do that. So let's go through these. Um, I don't have this written down anywhere but uh, you can scribble some notes, or if you want me to show this to you later, just let me know, or I can walk you through the steps or we can talk another time. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this time we don't need to use Creative Commons, um, the chooser, but we're going to do this all in YouTube. So heading to YouTube, <clears throat> so here we are. And I need to log into my YouTube account. So let me do that. And uh, I just have to check my notes because I don't do this all the time. And sometimes I forget my YouTube login. So logging in. Sorry, you got to see the entire process there. Okay, so here we are with Google, I'm sorry, in YouTube, and I want to post that video that's here sitting right now on my H drive, okay? And that's the video right there that I want to upload. So you may have um, used YouTube frequently to do uploading, but bear with me while I show you what's different a key difference in probably anything you've posted before where you can assign Creative Commons copyright. And what, what's your thought? Do you think YouTube makes this easy to find or difficult to find? Difficult, right? Because then we're taking away some of YouTube's licensing rights. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab this. I'm gonna upload my file and it's getting ingested into YouTube. And now we fill out some of the metadata about this. I'm not gonna do much because I wanna just focus on the licensing part for you. Okay, so I'm actually gonna skip everything in here and I'm gonna scroll down to where it says more options. And in the more options, 
again, you got to scroll. It's pretty well hidden. Okay, we're going to keep going. And now I found it. You've probably never noticed this before, but there's a little section <clears throat> called license and distribution. And of course, the default is that it gets the standard YouTube license, which allows YouTube to monetize your content. And they pretty much have full control of what you post to YouTube. <clears throat> and it means that you, as a user, <clears throat> cannot use other people's YouTube materials unless you have permission. That's the legality of it. So here's where you can allow others to use your YouTube content um, within a Creative Commons license. You change the drop down for license from the standard license to Creative Commons attribution. Woohoo! Probably never saw that before. Okay, so there it is, Creative Commons attribution. <clears throat> I'm going to hit next. And whoops, I'm going to say, yeah, sure, it's made for kids. And this is going to be ingested, and we're not going to wait for that. Okay, but what's important here is, um, oh, I'll just finish this off here. We'll just let everybody use this, and it's published, and boom, it's going to be up there. Okay, so my YouTube content is up, and it's got a Creative Commons license attached. So um, there it is. All right, now I want to show you how you can look for other people's Creative Commons YouTube content, because I think that's pretty valuable. And if you are doing something like a proposal to adopt uh, open materials for it in place of a textbook, um, selecting Creative Commons material from YouTube is something you'd need to specify. Otherwise, the material on here is traditionally copyrighted and traditionally licensed. Okay, so let me show you how you find that. I'm going to get out of the YouTube studio um, and I'm just going to go and I'll open a new, um, a new tab and just go back to YouTube. And <clears throat> I think we might have a, math, a couple mathematicians in the crowd here. So this is my search example is probably something only you guys will love, but here goes. We're going to look for videos on solving quadratic equations. Okay, how's that for excitement in the YouTube world? So we're going to pick solving a quadratic equations, and we do a traditional search in YouTube, and we get a whole lot of, whole lot of results. Okay, they're all through here, all kinds of things. But now what's really nifty is it's possible to filter. Maybe you've never noticed this option before in YouTube. You can click on filter and you can then restrict your search results to only items that have Creative Commons. So it's kind of buried over here. If you've done filtered searches in YouTube, maybe you've never paid attention to this before. Maybe you've looked for items that have closed captioning, but you can select Creative Commons. And when I do that, my new search, everything on here should be, uh, should have a Creative Commons license. Let me show you how you can check for that. We'll, we're just going to pick this one right here. Um, and if I click on the click YouTube zero. title, so we need to move that. To I'm going to stop it. We don't need to learn how to solve quadratic equations today. And notice that here it shows Creative Commons licensing is attributed to this. Sometimes you'll find a video and it's hard to see that. Let me pick a different one. Writing's not that easy, but great. This is a good example because it's not easily identified. You have to click on show more in order to get to the section where it says there's a Creative Commons license attributed to this. Okay, so those are my YouTube examples. Now you know how you can post to YouTube and assign Creative Commons and how you can search for Creative Commons materials on YouTube. Okay, my last example, uh, if I go back to my, <clears throat> we're gonna kind of skip through all this part. I already showed you that. That's in case my internet failed, right? 
Um, let's go back to that example of the material that we consider to be exemplary. And that was that handout that I created. It's not a textbook, it's a single homework exercise on um, plagiarism and assigning attribution to various topics, a learning exercise for students in my class on information literacy. So now I've already assigned this a Creative Commons license, but frankly, the impact that this will have is pretty limited, right? It's really limited to the students that I teach who get this as a handout. Now I'm ready to move to the next step, which is to start sharing my materials to a more global audience, to start participating as a producer of open content and to make my materials more easily found by others. So one of the ways that we can do that is to post our content to open repositories. So there's a number of them that exist. Two of the really well-known ones are called OER Commons, and the other is called Merlot. Merlot is an acronym for something that I don't remember, something about educational resources, I think. I believe it's based in California, hence the wine reference, okay? But we're gonna use Merlot as our um, example repository, and I'm gonna paste my homework, I'm gonna upload my homework assignment there. Recall, here's my homework assignment that I think others might be interested in using. So <clears throat> let me just check my notes here. Okay, so we're gonna post, we're gonna go to, whoops, we're gonna go to Merlot. So bear with me as I switch over to my browser and I'm gonna open a new tab and we're gonna go to merlot.org. <clears throat> Merlot contains, uh, well, here's the numbers, okay, uh, enormous quantity of learning resources that are all open and available for other faculty to reuse um, in an open environment. So, um, there's all kinds of materials here. You can search for them, okay, here's how you can browse. Uh, you can browse by your discipline. Um, I, I know, uh, I think there's at least one of you here from business. Um, you can check that way. You can sort and try to find, um, uh, I know Jody's here, there might be information on um, entrepreneurship, for example, um, and so on. So you're welcome to go back to Merlot and see what you can find. But what I wanna do this afternoon is show you how you can post, how you can add your excellent material to Merlot. First of all, you need an account. So I've already set one up. It's really easy to set up a Merlot account. And I am just going to log in to my Merlot account. Uh, bear with me while I type this. Let's see if I got it on the first time. There we are. Okay, so now I need to describe this information and the metadata or the, the, the content that I put in these fields is really important so that others can have as much useful information as they can to find this. You know, you saw the number of materials that are in here in this repository and I wanna use descriptive information. So I'm gonna upload my file. That's my first step. And this is located on my uh, located on my uh, my local drive. So bear with me here as I find this file, and it's this one here. And I'm going to upload this, and it gets ingested into the repository. And I'm going to add a title to this, and I'm going to call this um, plagiarism and attribution exercise. Okay, and um, I'm going to indicate that this discipline is uh, academic support services, and my subdiscipline is, uh, I forgot to check this before, uh, okay, library leadership, and I'm going to just say homework exercise or assignment 
requiring students to indicate if described information needs to be cited. So it's about my lesson about when, you know, facts and figures, you know, facts don't need to be cited, opinions probably do if you're citing somebody else's opinion and so on. Okay, I'm not gonna add keywords in the interest of time right now. And um, I'm gonna select my material type. My material type is that this is a, um, uh, let's see, we'll call this a drill and practice. My audience is high school and college general or lower division. Um, and I'm actually gonna skip the rest of this in the interest of time, okay? Ah, but here's the par part that's really important. I want to make sure I assign a Creative Commons license to this. Of course, it's on the document itself, but I wanna put that in here too. It's not the zero license. That's the one that Sarah uh, mentioned where no attribution is required. I'd like to be, um, I'd like to have attribution given. Do I want to allow commercial use? I think I said yes for this one. That was fine. And I want to allow derivatives also. And I submit this. Uh, supply an image. Okay. <laughs> um, I wasn't expecting that. I don't think I have an image. Um, so I'm going to skip that part. Okay. In the interest of time, we're going to skip the images. Um, so I'm not going to actually be able to finish this off right now. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I had to skip an image, but anyway, except for that step, that's how you can, uh, post your materials to Merlot. All right. I'm sorry. I didn't finish that off. So, um, Sarah and I learned a great deal about Creative Commons, first of all, from our former colleague, Val Walden, a librarian extraordinaire who's now enjoying life as a retiree. So we want to give a shout out to Val, who uh, did a lot of the work in developing this um, th this content originally. But we also would like to give a shout out to um, the American Library Association. Um, and the Creative Commons organization for uh, publishing this um, a monograph that's available and with an open license that's about, you know, it's hundreds of pages long and it's all about Creative Commons and that's linked from our site. So you're welcome to uh, take a look at that um, portions of it. There's more information about Creative Commons. Um, I feel like I kind of raced through those last examples, but anyway, that really does conclude our remarks. I'm going to stop sharing and we'll be happy to take questions that you have um, about anything that we, uh, we covered today. And you can unmute and shout out your question. So I thought it was great that you showed about the um, YouTube videos, but yeah. I know um, now Hudson Valley has what is it? It's like the TechSmith Nomia videos. Yeah. So my guess is there has to be another way to do something for that, right? So what you can do with that um, is I know some people, um, they'll just even put the CC image right on the opening. Like if you're using um, slides or a slide deck or even just um, some kind of graphic, you can okay. just put that in yourself. Um, I know at the library, we actually, we export our TechSmith videos and import them into YouTube. So we get around it that way. Okay. Um, so that's another option too. Awesome, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Great question. Let's see. Um, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. I was so on one of those videos you were showing that had the Creative Commons license. Yeah, YouTube still showed an ad. So, <laughs> where's that money going? I'm guessing it's not. That, it's I'm guessing it's going right back to YouTube, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I don't think that if you've got um, Creative Commons, I I'm guessing that YouTube um, still. Uh, there's probably something you sign off on when you set up your YouTube account that allows them to still monetize your your contributions to yeah. 
to the fullest extent so that, they can. But if so, that Creative Cubs license is um, it doesn't specify which of the types, so it's probably the least restrictive. I'm assuming. That, that's my I, guess. It says Creative Commons attribution, I believe, and I think that just is the CCBY, the the most the least restrictive license, rather. So that means the creative the person who also whoever's channel can also make money off of it too. That I'm assuming. Right. Yes. Yeah. They could use it and and use it for commercial purposes if they wanted to. Because I was looking at a, a textbook that I have, and I was somebody was setting up a YouTube channel that had the least restrictive license for CC, and so would then I still be able to monetize that portion of it then? So long, so you're using a textbook that already has a, a license, a CC license. But no, yeah. So it would but depend it, it on what can, license is on it. It says it can be used for commercial stuff. Then, yep, you could. Um, Scott, I I just want to, for formality's sake, you know, Sarah and I are not oh, yeah. lawyers. Yes, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, yeah. <laughs> yes. We we can just give you our our our. our what 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 the licenses sound like? And the other. I, I got it. <laughs> The other is probably stating the obvious that I can assure you that YouTube does every, absolutely everything it can to get every penny out of the content that we're all uh, giving it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, you know, you might not want to put it on YouTube. Maybe you post your videos, you know, somewhere else or be prepared that somebody could, um, you know, you, you probably are not going to be rich with your math videos on YouTube. Just just saying. You, uh, you'd be surprised. I, I have one friend who's making quite a bit of money off math no YouTube kidding. videos. No kidding. Oh, uh, that's great. I think he's up to 100. Went to school with him. He's up to like 130,000 followers, and he posts quite a few videos that are wow. popular. That's wonderful. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Other, other questions? I think Brenda posted a link to our OER guide, I believe, earlier in the chat, but I'll pop it in there again. Um, so there's a whole page based on create uh, about Creative Commons licensing, and I think we'll try to put this video there at some point, I think is our intent. Yeah. Um, and there's lots of other resources and links. Um, and also, uh, if you go on that page, I believe there's a search for OER tab. There are links to Merlot and OER Commons and all sorts of things like that also. The the other, um, uh, the other point I, uh, I'll just uh, add here is when um, faculty are proposing open materials uh, through the SUNY um, OER initiative, you know, those come in to Sarah and me. One of the, what we do when we get your, when we get faculty proposals is when faculty indicate what materials they're going to use in place of a traditional check test textbook, we check them. We, we go to the source that's being recommended and we look for the Creative Commons symbol. And that's our way to know that the material is open. Um, so that's the, that, that's the indicator. And so by you putting it on your materials helps others to use your stuff. Um, and for you to claim you're using open uh, when you put forward proposals, um, and it's also how you can go out and identify others. Um, if you haven't attended the faculty, uh, the workshop uh, introduction to OER for faculty, um, that is next Friday in the afternoon. I believe there's one seat remaining. So um, if you want to jump on or um, and grab that seat, if you haven't been yet, I think most of you have already been. Um, but if you haven't, there's a seat remaining. Um, if you don't know where to find that, feel free to send me a quick message. And the first message I get, I'll, uh, you're, you're the one who'll get the seat. Um, but anyway, thank, thank you so much for your, your uh, I was just going to share one more thing, yeah. Brenda. Um, with, when you're using the CC license chooser, Brenda, you, you skipped over this part, and I'm just going to jump oh, in. Thank you. Um, you can actually add more information and metadata to your license if you would like to. It doesn't show up very nicely on this screen, as you'll see. But if you click um, help others attrib attribute you, rather, um, 
it'll pop down this box where you can add the title, um, your name, a link to maybe your website or some, you know, back to the work where it's hosted um, and other sorts of permissions, the format, um, license mark and things like that. So there's actually more options. And I believe that's what I used um, when I created our slideshow. You'll notice there's, you know, Brenda Hazard and Sarah Romeo have licensed this work under a, so it adds more wording to your license um, to, to make it more attributable to you and to make you more contactable if someone were to want to use that work. So I just wanted to add that in there. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Sarah, that's, that's a great addition. Um, yeah. You know, I hope at some point um, the college will consider faculty contributions to open repositories as part of discretionary promotion and tenure consideration, you know, so making your works open and asking for attribution is your way to, you know, could be a way for you to describe your impact on the profession. Um, and uh, so, you know, that's another good reason to do that. And I noticed, Scott, you said some of the material you use um, says, I think you say new or GNU, that's another open license. So Creative Commons are not the only open licenses that are out there. So that's something to, to keep in mind as well. Thanks for adding that, Scott. I'm I'm not familiar with the with the new licensing. Yeah. I'm sure it's a Google search away. <laughs> um, and I think uh, Paul has put the uh, link to the evaluation form for this session in the chat as well. Um, so I think we're supposed to ask you to fill that out also before you head out. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> if you want to have any, you know, uh, leave any feedback for this uh, yeah. because the faculty workshop day committee takes this feedback very seriously for planning next year's uh, workshop day. So please, we really appreciate it. And feel free to reach out to Sarah or me um, if you have questions in the future about Creative Commons or about um, uh, OER in general. Um, so we look forward to hearing from you and to working with you on this initiative. Thanks everyone. Thanks everybody. Thank you.